Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a custom cushion for maybe a new chair that you just got. This one was actually used. So I got it for 20 bucks, which is a steal of a deal. I'm gonna be leaving it on my front porch. So I wanted to give it a good cushion. Um, I have sat on it before and it definitely needs some bum support. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a custom cushion. As you can see, this cushion has a curve in it. So we're gonna address um, how to do that exactly and how to make it also so that I can take it off and I can throw it in the washing machine also. So I hope that you come along with my little cushion journey and hopefully you learn something along the way. Okay, so I just wanna take a closer look at the cushion before we start to make it, just so you can get an idea of how it's going to look. So here is the finished product. Um, this is a slip type of cushion cover. So as you can see, it has an opening right here and it overlaps to keep anything out. But I think it turned out beautiful with the piping and I think this will be a great and easy project if you are new and beginning at trying out cushions. can see this is a pretty large piece of foam this is actually a memory foam mattress topper that I got for about 20 bucks over at that same auction so this is perfect for this cushion and as well as so many other projects so I have a lot of plans for this very large piece of foam that you will see in the future so we're just gonna go ahead and cut a piece of this after we get our measurements so I'm just gonna measure the front of the chair, which is going to be about 17, 17 and a quarter, I'd say. 17 and a quarter. I'm just going to draw the shape on my book just so that I can make sure. And I'm going to do it again. So it's, it's exactly the same. So it doesn't taper in. So that's good. We can now measure from back to front, and that is about 19. And then we can take this and we can make a pattern. And the great thing about using the paper is that we can place the paper on here and make sure it fits before we cut our foam out. So I cut out a square. So I took this measurement and then that measurement and I just made a perfect square, or rectangle, sorry. And what you could do is you can put the paper down and then sort of just press it in the curves. So just place it how you want it. And then when you get to something like this, you can just kind of put in the curve and then tr put a pencil line, fold the pattern in half, and then when you cut out a perfect curve, then it'll be mirrored on both sides. So here's my pattern. And I'm just gonna place it. And I think that turned out pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna place our pattern. And this is going to be the cushion pattern. So this isn't gonna be the pattern for the actual slip cover. So this is just for the cushion. And we can just use a Sharpie. And then we can just cut that out. So now we're just gonna take the cushion, do a little dry fit, make sure it's all nice and snug. And that looks perfect. Okay, so now we're back in the sewing room. We have our foam cut out from our pattern piece. And now we're gonna create the pattern piece for the fabric that goes around it. So this type of slip cover is going to be one that has just a slit in the back so that you can put your foam inside. So there's not gonna be any zipper, so it's gonna be a super easy slip cover. So this is the pattern piece that I have. And I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna keep it folded in half. 
And the pattern piece that I create, it's gonna be like this. And so then I'm just gonna cut that on the fold of my fabric so that it opens up to be a whole piece. And that's just gonna ensure that everything is nice and symmetrical, especially if you're working with any type of curve. So of course, like I said before, this will still all apply to a rectangle or square cushion. So just stay along with the process and I will of course point out those specific areas if you are using a square or rectangle cushion. Um, okay, so now we have, I have already cut out my new pattern piece. So this is it. So this one is a half inch bigger than this. I have chosen to use a half inch seam allowance. Um, so if you want to do a quarter inch seam allowance, then you would take this pattern and you add a quarter inch seam allowance. If you have a square or a rectangle, just add uh, one inch to your measurements. And then that will make it so that there's half inch seam allowance on all four sides of your square or your rectangle. So with this, I'm gonna cut out the top of the cushion. And then after that, we're going to manipulate this so that we can create the pocket in the back. Okay, so I think that turned out perfect. So now we can work on manipulating the pattern piece so that we can make the back of the slip cover. So I took the pattern piece and I drew a line right across it. So this is gonna be right in half. Um, if you have a circle, then just do it right in half. And if you have a rectangle right in the middle, same with a square. So I'm just gonna chop that in half. And then when I go to cut it out of my fabric, I'm actually gonna add three, two and a half to three inches onto these ends. And that's how we're gonna hem it so that, and then it's also going to overlap a bit when you go to sew it together. So it's gonna overlap a little bit and then you'll be able to open it up to be able to insert your pillow. So add two and a half to three inches onto here and here. So I'm adding on the three inches And we're gonna cut out the other piece, add the pattern piece with that three inches added on. Okay, so here is the top of our cushion. And then we have this piece, which is going to be the bottom. And then this is the other part of that. And it should overlap six inches because we added three inches to this piece and three inches to this piece. So now we're going to figure out our measurements for the sides. So of course this is gonna be one long continuous piece, but then this is going to be one panel. So like I said, with the rectangles and squares, um, you're just gonna kind of follow how I do it with this piece for all of your sides. I measured out this and this is 20 inches. So we're gonna add on a half inch seam allowance to that measurement and that's going to be 21 and then the size of the foam is going to be three inches um, thick and we're going to add another inch onto that because we want again that half inch seam allowance so this piece is going to be 21 inches by four inches so if you have again three other rectangular sides do that exact same thing, add an inch to your width and your length. And for this, I have 54 inches long. And again, we'll do that four inches thick, and then I can cut those strips out. Okay, so I cut out the side pieces, and I didn't have a long 54 inch section of fabric. So I just took another piece and then I sewed it together, trying to match up the pattern so it's not as obvious. Um, and I also made it so that this part will actually be on the side of the cushion so you won't even see it. Um, so that is the front, and this is the all the way around. So now I'm going to cut out my piping, and that is gonna be one and a half inch strips and that's gonna go around my cord. 
So of course, piping is optional for any project. Um, if you want to learn how to make the piping, I am going to have a separate video um, linked in the information icon so that you can go over and have the step-by-step -step, um, instructions on how to do that, just because this is gonna make this video way too long. And it is really just a decorative thing that I'm adding on and it's not completely necessary for the cushions functionality. Um, so head over there if you wanna learn how to make it all by yourself. You can, of course, buy um, pre-made piping also. And I'll have links to all of this stuff over at the blog post that is linked down below so that if you wanna just go and buy it, make it easier on yourself, you can do that or to find the cord and piping um, to actually make it yourself. So now we have our two pieces hemmed. I had to adjust this one. It was a little too big, I guess. Um, so you want them to be overlapping and you want to just size it with the first pattern piece so that they're exactly the same. And then you can pin these on the side. And if you wanna just do like a little stitch here and there just so that it like holds it all together, um, then you don't have to worry about things shifting when you go to do the rest of your construction. Okay, so for most cushions, I would recommend doing each piece separately. And then, so you do this side and then this side and then the, all, all four sides separately with your side panels. And then after that, attach the side panels together like that, right? But for this one, I feel like with the piping, it's gonna go a little bit different. So I am going to actually create a loop with my uh, large piece and then the front piece. And then I will add the piping and this onto the top of the cushion and just pin that all into place to make sure that it fits perfectly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew these ends together to create that loop. Okay, so we're gonna use that half inch seam allowance that I said we were going to use. And we will attach the other side. Making sure we don't flip it around. And now we can pin this with the piping onto the top of the cushion. So I'm just making sure that that fits here. And then um, I'm gonna take all the clips I have and with the piping, I'm going to sandwich it in between the layers and then just go all the way around the whole cushion. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it started and then it's pretty much straightforward from here. But um, the beginning is the piping is going to veer on and then veer off. So this is the back of my cushion which is the curved area. I also found the center of this and the center of the band or the side piece. And we're gonna make sure that that's lined up perfectly. And then we're gonna put that here, but then like I said, it's gonna veer off and then veer on. So we're just going to start on the other side of the notch and then take our band here line that up and I'm just gonna do this the veering off part when I have it in the machine because it'll be easier and then we'll just start to clip away when we get to go around the curved edge so if this is a circle pattern you're going to want to cut little notches, possibly little notches in here, and that's going to help the fabric to curve around. 
So I'm just going to work away as you guys can watch and then um, if I clip you'll see how that works out. So I just wanted to show you how I did the corner. So this, I cut a lot of little notches because you want to obviously get a right angle. Um, so there is going to be a little bit of roundedness though either way, so you can't really avoid it. But so when you're going around it, even though this is like, you know, a squared angle, um, it because of the piping, it's so, you know, thick, it will either way have still a little bit of roundedness in that corner, but that's okay. During the piping, we're not going to sew at the very beginning. We're just going to start, we're going to start about like an inch, inch and a half away, and then we'll finish off the piping at the very end. So again, we're going to sew right close up to that piping, uh, like the actual tube right where you put the seam for the piping that's basically where we want to sew so we want to hide those stitches so we don't see them on the finished product so again my uh, feed dog is on top of the piping and I have this part super close and uh, it should be good so I can start to and if you need any help using an awl can help you uh, get really close to your presser foot without getting your fingers caught. And like I said, you want to stay on the pipe, so it's a little finicky. And you're just gonna go slow, take your time. So I'm gonna speed it up and then you can watch the magic. <laughs> So now that I've come back around, um, this turned out to be a little small. I don't know how that happened, but I just ended up, you know, just sewing a little bit out of it. And then now I'm going to finish off the piping. So the piping, like I said, is going to cross over each other. And we're going to try to line it up for like the center notch there. So we'll just go ahead and clip the rest of the way. And then it will go over the two cords together. Um, now this is why this uh, industrial machine definitely helps in a situation like this. Um, but if you're using smaller piping, um, you could definitely do it with a regular sewing machine. Or, you know, you could do the rest with a regular sewing machine and then do a stitch by hand just to finish it off because it is a little tough. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off the piping. Hopefully this turns out. I want to make sure that the piping is sticking out. It's a little bit of a hill to get up. And that's it. Okay, so this is how that will look. And then the rest is looking very good. Very pleased with that. Okay, so I have the one side on and it looks pretty darn good, I might say so myself. Um, so all I have to do is apply the back panel 
um, the piping turned out really, really great. So, um, if you're using a fabric that frays, this particular fabric does not fray, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, but if it does, you can serge the edges, you can do a zigzag stitch around the edges, you can also use a um, bias tape and put that around the edges, even a, um, a webbing, you can just kind of do that also with the, uh, like if you want to finish off the edges, um, this is going to be inside the cushion, so I don't mind seeing that, you know, every time I take the cushion out, but otherwise you will not see the inside of this. Um, so I think it's perfectly fine the way it is and you know just like the ones you get at the store they also are not finished on the inside. But I think it is turning out so beautifully and now we will do exactly the same. The only difference is is that I am not going to be putting um, piping all the way around this time um, just because I don't think it's necessary like back here. So I'm just going to do like the front and so you can see it from the bottom, you know, from looking at the chair. But other than that, the rest is going to be hidden inside the chair. So like I said, I'm just going to apply it here, around here, and then probably about halfway up. And then I'm just going to veer it right off. So this is pretty much the same as um, before. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then show you the end result. So this is how the piping just like I veered it off so you won't even see that part so it's perfect and now I can take my cushion and just like in a normal pillow usually put one side in first All the way in and then there we go it's so perfect now let's take it out and put it on the chair okay now we're gonna do the fit test And I think it fits perfectly. I'm super happy with how it turned out. The piping turned out amazing. And the fact that it doesn't line up does not bother me in the slightest. So hopefully it doesn't bother you. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. That's where I post updates for all of my tutorials as I'm working on them. Sorry about the goose. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.